What our version of the Infectious Disease Awareness Platform, or what we call IDAP, allows us to do is it allows us to create essentially a zero transmission risk zone. So the first step in our ability to control infection rates within our organization was to create the best screening system possible. And that's not just temperature screening, but we need to make sure that they are not next to each other. We had to actually think about the concept of traffic control. So the very first step was to develop an app that allowed the communication of patients to occur in such a way that they could readily wait in their vehicle, to go right into that room, complete their entire visit, leave, and not actually see another patient. That is an entirely unique process that I've not seen anywhere else. And I think that was kind of our first phase of security into this zone. The second and very important phase of security into the zone is what we do for employees. We screen them even more uh, comprehensively. And if there's any concern of exposure risk to those uh, individuals, whether it's from their local families or other uh, aspects, we have the ability to test. In a time when others are struggling to figure out where and how to test people with coronavirus, we have built a full comprehensive testing site that is absolutely minimal risk. It has negative pressure filtration uh, set up within the facility itself. It tests not only the active PCR test for coronavirus, but it tests the 30-day window period, including uh, FDA cleared uh, antibody testing. So we're not gonna end up missing the people who are at that level of risk. Once you secure this zone, and once we have a shield that essentially controls who goes in and out of this zone, the next step is really making sure that everything inside that zone is done at the top level possible. So this includes several different areas. Number one, it includes the actual building itself. We have invested in airflow technologies that will be deployed across our facilities, uh, particularly in our clinical uh, facing zones that allow us to basically control the flow of air particles in these areas. What that does is it keeps microbes, including bacteria, spores, and virus particles down as far as possible away from the airway of individuals. That is safety. In addition, our building is set up where the decontamination protocols are top level. These are the same decontamination protocols that are used at the Defense Department or in intensive care units. That's another way to keep things very, very safe. We've added UVC light or shortwave light that also is a decontamination protocol that occurs at the beginning, at the end of every day. These are the types of activities that have to occur within the physical proposition of our buildings to make sure that, they, that things stay safe. Uh, in addition, interpersonal communication, interpersonal uh, type activities amongst our staff is really key. Uh, we have deployed a set of policies that educate our employees to make sure that they wear face masks all the time. They stay within four to six feet of each other, preferably six feet. That limits the amount of cross contact that can actually occur. And we've also purchased a number of different devices and approaches to sanitize not only computers, but other screens and personal belongings. Anybody who enters our zone, this actual safe zone, uh, has to basically be tracked or at least monitored. That's what allows us to identify areas of risk. So we're actually one of the first to deploy a widespread hand washing technology system that utilizes targeted beacons that can tell whether or not someone has actually washed their hands appropriately or at least use hand sanitizer on a regular basis. So the final phase is really making sure that all of these processes that we're running with this zone are actually working. We will completely sample our zone to confirm that it's safe and on a day-by-day -day basis a dashboard is given that assesses their risk of infection. And indeed, if anyone actually tests positive, we can isolate that person, remove them from the zone, treat them, retest them, make sure they are safe, bring them back into the zone. We can also identify anybody they interacted with and make sure that those individuals are safe and not in a state of infection. This type of model is perhaps the highest level model that exists. We cannot be in a position where if there's one person who has a certain infectious disease that we shut down an entire organization. That does not allow businesses or economies to exist. The IDAP platform allows you to have the best tracking system possible. You can actually stop disease spread right away and that's the type of efficiency that we believe this system will do not only in the short term but long term for years to come.